Yo, 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 Our story begins in the middle of the 40s, when a hopeful young soldier called Sam... Oh, uh, we're not doing that? Our story begins in the middle of last Tuesday, where a hopeless young freeloader called Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. Sam was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But not the actual spoon that he has in his mouth now. That is a different spoon. But a figurative spoon that represents all the wealth and attention that he has been receiving from his parents. And their butlers. And their butler's parents. You're a douche, aren't you, Sam? Blink twice if yes. <laughs> he can't hear me. This is Sam's girlfriend. Also not being heard by Sam. She's mad at Sam for his lack of responsibility, produced by his large wealth. She also mentions the fact that Sam has forgotten her birthday for the third year in a row. Sam's girlfriend is upset. As with most rich and famous brats, Sam does not pick up on that. Instead, he decides to lay this gem. Things just work out for me, baby. I can't just run around and do stuff. 
I'd end up with a limp spine. Then, something. Sam's girlfriend does something she should have done a long time ago. <laughs> Sam is laying unconscious on the floor. He gathers his strength and makes an effort to get up. Then he makes another effort to stand up straight. Sam is hit in the head so hard, he has to remind himself how to walk. He takes a right step. Then he takes a left step. Good job, Sam! You're very good at existing. Huh? How dare you startle my child! An overprotective mother hurls a cup of coffee in Sam's face. He has to blink rapidly to regain his vision. Say something, Harold! Oh, gee. How is our son going to become a respected politician if he can't fend for himself? I thought he was going to become an actor. Oh, what's the difference? Sam remembers the one thing he's good at paying for stuff. So he turns around to pay for his beverage. Sam pays the guy 500 euros, barely covering the coffee. Thanks for the tip, douchebag. Sam decides to hurl another 500 at the guy. Not such a douchebag after all. Sam is hurling stacks of 500s left and right. He has no perception of money. Sam is about to spend his whole weekly allowance on tipping a barista named Tony. He really was hit hard in the head. Holy feces! I'll just start my own coffee shop! Once again, Sam makes someone quit their job by tipping them too much. So long, suckers! <laughs> Sam spends a decade making his way out the door, which is pretty good for a guy with a mate. As Sam waggles outside, he sees his girlfriend on the other side of the road. Sam pulls himself together and rushes towards his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend. This is when a septic tank truck approaches Sam with an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. The impact renders him eight types of dead. Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. Sam does not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. 
Then, he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. He checks out that horrible sound he's hearing. Not the horrible sound of the screaming souls around him. The other horribly irritating sound. The source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise, the grim reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on Sam. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam, and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude! Your soul be like a diamond! Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. For reals? Aight, man. It decided. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of Hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of Hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into Hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay, but for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Oh, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a minesweeper. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. Could be worse. Whatever. Kinda sounds fun. <laughs> Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be a struggling freelance artist. Oh my, that'll be all your shreds, dear sir. No! This is truly hell! <laughs> he keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the gatekeeper of hell. Whenever that's going to be. Hehe, <laughs> I bro. I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now.
Sam has just traveled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive, and more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, oh guy, you look horrible. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. Oh, cool. You be alive. Everything be fine. Aight, so, this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kinda have to do stuff on purpose. Um, you be turning kinda blue. Might wanna consider breathing. <sighs> Bitchin! You be blinking and breathing, that be bitchin! So, alright. Go survive for a day, and I'll let you live normally for the rest of your life. If you somehow die within the next 24 hours, you'll go to hell and I'll keep your shreds forever. I'll be over there doing kick flips if in you need me. Once again, Sam has to make an effort to get up. This time, he has to focus on his spine. And, once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. <gasps> Sam tries out a strange maneuver by stepping with the same leg twice. Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. With clean teeth, Sam is ready to smile. He won't for at least 24 hours, though. Your spine, Sam! It matters! Sam tries to take a leak. Hey, dude, have you seen my... Oh. Uh... Sam takes a leak everywhere, including, but not limited to, himself. Sam takes a leak on the floor. Sam's vision is blurrier than a no- One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. He has to use his opposite leg to get up again. Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam is clean as a whistle. Good job, Sam. You're impressing no one, Sam. Clean and empty, Sam decides to find some clues. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Yeah! Yeah! Hi, let's see here. Eek, ah! 
Sam can open doors now. Clever boy. What is over there, Sam? Oh. Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? <gasps> blink, Sam! Blink! He picks a pair of blue jeans. The ugly ones. Sam successfully puts on his pants, feeling more accomplished than ever. He proceeds to find a jacket. Only the best one will do. He settles for a mediocre one. Humble. Fully clothed, Sam is ready for the day. P.S. He's not. <gasps> he puts on his shoes, living the dream. Of having shoes on. <laughs> Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. Sam decides to hurl himself down the stairs. Apparently too used to hurling money around. <gasps> Flappy Rooster is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a Flappy Rooster right now, though. That was either supposed to or not supposed to happen. We'll never know. Following this story at this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... Hey, Lucy, I'm home! Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, Sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. Sam finishes his food like the big boy he is. Good job, Sam. Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip.
with some coffee in his system, Sam finds it easier to exist. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, stupid. Dude, I am totally gonna kick flip over your car. Oh, dang. Dude, it was like that when I got there. You might want to get that hood fixed. It, it be loose. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just get in the car, yo. Hey, dude, I turned your automatic gearbox into a manual one for the funds. That be ironic or what? At this point, Sam notices that Dev isn't really a nice guy. I guess I should teach you how to drive a stick, huh? Hehe. <laughs> Alright, so, when starting the car, you want to press down the clutch pedal. Nobody has clutched anything for years. Good luck, Sam. Now, while you have the clutch down, press the gas pedal. As you let go of the clutch, the car will start moving in biz. Good job, dude. You ain't as useless as you look, know what I mean? Now, to stop, you gotta move your right foot to the brake pedal. Left for us, he means. And obviously, press it down. Give stopping a go, dude. Nice! Now, start driving again, like I showed you. And obviously, you turn left and right with your arms. If you want to drive faster, you gotta use the stick, baby. To upshift, you press down the clutch and then yank the stick. <laughs> no, dude, you can't change gears without pressing down the clutch first. Obviously, you can't turn left when your hand be on the stick. So to turn left, you have to move your hand back to the steering wheel, y'all. And so Sam and the Lord of Damnation are on their merry way towards a new adventure. Together. Cozy. Dude, there be an old lady on the road. Left. Whew, we almost killed that lady. She ain't due for another... a few hours. Listen, if you kill somebody before their time because I messed up your motoring skills, I will be in deep feces, okay? So keep your eyes on the road. If you almost kill someone, I'll stop the car, yo. But then, you'll have to start it all over again with the clutching biz, right? We'd be good to go. Anyway, dude, you're probably wondering why all this biz be happening to you. To tell you the truth, bro, it be all part of bureaucratic left. Stop! Now what was I saying? To tell you the truth, bro, 
It'd be all part of bureaucratic bull feces. The shreds of life you give to those gatekeepers to get into hell? Yeah, they'd be distributed between the bank of hell and Satan. Oh yeah, dude. The big S. Then, the Bank of Hell distributes their share as salary among the citizens of Hell. Do you know how much my salary be? A little less than a burger flipper at Mickey Demons, yo, and a little more than an elementary school teacher. You know what I be saying? Up high. Never mind. A soul has one, maybe two shreds on him, depending on his life quality. And I don't want to y'all go right holy feces. Anyway, and I don't want to point fingers, but someone here be a spoiled brat, bro. Dude, you had seven shreds. You have any idea how rare that be? I be scamming. I mean, making deals with bratty souls that have more than two shreds. Right, yo, close one. As I was saying. I be scamming, I mean making deals with bratty souls that have more than two shreds of life for an eternity. Left, yo! Stop, yo! <gasps> what be up with all those old ladies today, bro? Where was I? I be scamming, I mean making deals with bratty souls that have more than two shreds of life for an eternity, yo. And I only got 295 shreds of life, bro. Oh, wiki, 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 wiki. <laughs> wiki, wiki. <laughs> Skeletons for the win, yo. Yo, 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 death for life. What be that gray cloud in the middle of the road? Oh, feces. That be a whole school of old ladies. Get ready. Right. Ah. Yo, go. Ah. Right. Ah. Left. Ah. Yo, right. Oh. Ah. What be up with all those old ladies today, bro? Hey, Sam, you're never gonna make it to work on time with all these grannies everywhere, dude. What do you say we take a shortcut? <laughs> Go left, bro. And so Sam drives the car to a place he has never been before. A place called Bridge Street. Oh, 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 oh dude. I hope it be safe here. Hope there be no, say, crazy gang members here or nothing. No, really though, where be the crazy gang members? Oh, crazy gang members! Oh, excuse me, you be a crazy gang member? Dude, don't you worry, I know where the crazy gang members be. To Death's surprise and Sam's relief, the gang members are lying dead on the ground. This is when Death notices a distinct silhouette in the distance. What be the deal, bro? Why be there all the holy feces? The silhouette is contention and enmity, bloodshed and hostility, strife and strike, struggle, battle, war. She is neither wearing dumb clothes nor doing kickflips. She is just standing there. After a job well done. Oh, holy feces, holy feces, it be her! I'll be my breath. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool! Okay, just don't be yourself. Hey, War, how it be going, babe? Wanna hit your ride in these sweet wheels? Oh, holy feces, here she comes. Hey, girl, where to? Just shut up and take me to the metro. Aren't you supposed to, like, reap a bunch of people, you knucklehead? I was, I was. 
But then I got bored, so now I hang out with my buddy Sammy here. Ain't it right, Sammy? Stop here. Okay, let's go. So instead of guiding endless amounts of confused souls to the afterlife, you waste time with this dumb, ugly mortal. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want a cigarette? Ugh, you are so annoying. You know I'm trying to quit. <sighs> Fine, give me one. I hate you. Go right here. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Hey, guess what? I totally landed a kickflip today. Take a left. Stop here. Okay, let's go. Wow, you really landed a kickflip? That's kind of hot. Yeah, or, well, I almost landed a kickflip. You know, Famine can do a frontside kickflip. Such a show off. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Ow! Dang it! The grandma's be back! Left! Ah! Right! Ah! Left! Ah! Yo! Right! Ah! Left! Ah! Oh, I'd never be getting used to those grannies. Stop here. This is where I get off. Hi, babe. I'll see you around. Whatever. <sighs> what you be looking at? Oh, snap! You be getting late for work, bro. Step on it as hard as you can if we gonna make it. Go, go, go! Yo, faster, faster! Faster, faster! Faster, dude! Get up to fifth gear! Yo, dude! Faster! Yo, faster, faster! Faster, faster! Yo, dude! Faster! Almost fast enough, dude! Step on it! Almost fast enough, dude. Step on it. Oh, feces. Stop, stop. Uh. Feces. Did we kill somebody? Oh, please let it just be a rock or a hipster or something. Sam goes out the door to see what happens. Oh, God. He only has to follow death's crying voice. Oh, man. Feces. This guy wasn't due. He wasn't due. What be I gonna do? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Sam, can I borrow your last shred of life? Blink twice if yes. I guess we're doing this.
All right. Yo, 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 let's do a deal that we can steal, yada, yada, yada. Uh, slap your salmon 57 times in 24 hours or you'll be dead forever. Now, get out of here. <laughs> I just had to. Anyway, let's get out of here. Weird. It's another busy day in Robocorp Inc., where they produce automatic robots for fun, convenience, and most importantly, safety. Finally, Sam makes it to work, and only by having the most terrifying morning of his life. He waggles towards the entrance, still shaky after the events of his trip. nose off in a laser accident? They gave me a robot nose. <laughs> and guess what? I can... Ah, Robocorp's proudest and newest invention, so the MaidBot. Bot. It is rumored to have over 3,000 functions, including pest control, rest control, and guest control. And it can make you a nice cup of coffee. Yes, Sam. Do the splits. They'll respect you more. For the seven billionth time, Sam has lost the key card to his office and has to request a new one from reception. Sam focuses all his brain energy on trying to speak well-formulated sentences. Uh, hello, Mr. Samuel. How can I help you? I... Uh, uh, m m s s uh, m very good, sir. Uh, was there anything else? K K Okay. I didn't really catch that, sir. Sam tries again. He needs his key card. <laughs> I Do you are a wordsmith, Sam? Of course, sir. Try not to lose it again. Sam takes the card and heads for his office. The elevator is occupied. Sam has no time for waiting. He wants to get around to doing nothing as soon as possible. And then he meets his old nemesis, Stairs. Taking his keycard up the stairs, that's the real challenge. We've seen Sam do weirder things. Sam hurls himself down the stairs. No one cares to ask.
Sam goes in the third door to his office area. Yeah, it is a dangerous job, but the health benefits are awesome, dude! I blew off my leg in a laser accident, and they gave me a new one right away. This is Ingrid, Sam's secretary. Since Sam never gets any calls or does any actual work, Ingrid has a level Sam's office. A waste of space, according to everyone ever. Sam doesn't do much at work, simply because his father doesn't let him. According to Samuel Sr., he only has to show up, shut up, and not mess up. This gives Sam plenty of time to sharpen his skills on his favorite game, Flappy Rooster. Yes, he has one here too. Sam decides to try and beat his record of 10,000 points. Someone knocks on Sam's door. It is Ingrid. Uh, Mr. Samuel, Mr. Welfenberg wants to speak with you. Also known as Samuel Sr., Sam's dad. He seems kind of angry. Take the elevator to his office. And I got this one after my 16th laser accident. Honestly, I can barely feel pain anymore. The soothing elevator music sets the mood for productivity and not asking questions. All of Sam's interactions with his old man have lately been reduced to short meetings in his office. This is Samuel Sr. He owns Robocorp Inc. And he is tired of the fact that Sam is always late to work. Sam is keeping the morale of his company down, and it is time for him to work for his money. No more fancy offices. You are starting at the bottom. Today, you start as a lefidium inserter in the storage room. Go down to the basement and get to work! Sam has done weirder things to impress his dad. Lafidium is a ridiculously rare material packed with energy. It is the key ingredient to the success behind the robots in Robocorp Inc. Its energy is measured in consciousness, and even just a little bit of the stuff could do wonders for artificial intelligence. Despite all his efforts, Sam ends up working for the first time in his life. At least he's alive. Sam's job is ridiculously simple. He has to pull the lever so a chunk of lefidium comes down. Then he has to put the required amount of lefidium in a robot's slot Dude, your dad couldn't have picked a worse day to make you work with this stuff. I guess we'll be back in hell in no time. I'm gonna do a kickflip now. Nah! Friggin' skateboard. Alright, let's see here. Yeah! Relax my body. Bend in my knees. Wrong, yo. Let's see. Yeah! 
Sam's vision is blurrier than a Norwegian teenager at a wedding. He decides to blink. Freaking skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Yeah! Relax my body. Bend in my knees. Be doing wrong, yo. Let's see. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Hey, yeah! Gonna do a kickflip now. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see. Yeah! Relax my body. Bend in my knees. Sam figures out how to open an automatic door. Impressive, Sam. Ah! Oh, what I be doing wrong, yo? Let's see. Even that task gets too hard for Sam. He drops the incredibly toxic material. No, no, don't breathe that, Sam. Gonna do a kickflip now. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Yeah! Relax my body, bend in my knees. Oh, what I be doing wrong, yo? Let's see. Gonna do a kickflip now. Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Yeah. Relax my body. Bend in my knees. Sam, yeah. blink! <sighs> Gonna do a kickflip now. <sighs> Friggin' skateboard. Hi, let's see here. Relax my body, bend in my knees. Oh, what I be doing wrong, yo? Let's see.
gonna do a kickflip now. <sighs> Friggin' skateboard. Hi, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah. Relax my body. <gasps> Sam decides to drink some water. Because, why not? Blink, Sam! Blink! Ah, oh, what I be doing wrong, yo? Let's see. Yeah! Yeah! Gonna do a kickflip now. Nyah! Friggin' skateboard. Hi, right, let's see. Yeah. Relax my body. Bending my knees. Doing wrong, yo. Let's see. Yeah. Yo, Sam. I can totally kickflip over that box. Death says, having never actually landed a kickflip in his entire existence. Yeah. Death manages to spill Lephidium all over every robot in the basement. Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh no, stop! No, Sam! What are we gonna do, yo? Every robot in the basement gets too conscious and escapes. Sam has to get out of work ASAP, and this time with a good excuse. Don't you see, you doorknob? I was directly involved in waking those things to life. If they hurt anyone, I will be in ten types of feces. The electronic door is on lockdown mode. Sam comes to terms with his death and gives up. No, 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 no. You can't die now, dude. The electronic door is on lockdown mode. Sam comes to terms with his death and gives up. No, 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 you... Sam decides to take a last sip of water before his demise. <gasps> but wait! It looks like Sam has a plan! Incredible! Sam short-circuits the door! He will live to breathe manually another day! Gosh darn it, you be- Blink, Sam! Blink! Lemur, we do have to stop oh. them! That be what I be talking about, dude. We are in deep feces, fellas. Someone exposed the robots to too much lefidium, and now they are all conscious. They are headed straight for Mushroom Orphanage. Population, 300 lovely kids. All the robots that became conscious were produced in the last 10 years. That means they have a large arsenal of functions, but are fragile as hell. We will have to use an old and sturdy manual bot 
to be able to take them down. It is controlled manually. But gosh darn it, Johnson! None of us have done anything manually for years! Oh, I still do things manually sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I can... Told you she was doing a few hours. Do we have any volunteers at all for this task? Mm -hmm. It is not that I believe in you, son, but I've never seen you actually do anything on your own before. So, at this point, <laughs> I just want to see what happens. Chillax, bro. You ain't on your own. Yo, yo, yo! We need to blow up those robots before they hurt somebody!